I'm Sammy with DownRedBudDrive.com and today we're going to be making flannel trees. So these turn out super, super cute and they're so easy to make. You don't have to be crafty at all to be able to make flannel trees. And this year, uh, buffalo plaid, anything plaid and rustic is really in. So it's been a super easy way and an affordable way for you to be able to incorporate, and be able to incorporate some of that decor into your house without spending a ton of money, or without having to be super crafty over a trend that might be over next year. So we're going to make some flannel trees, and all you're going to need to make this is very simple. You will need glue gun, glue sticks, obviously. These paper cones, okay? If you go to the link in the description, I have where I bought this set of three. There's like a large, a medium, and a small. Um, they're like the perfect size for layering with different stuff. They come in a set of three for like 10 bucks. You could probably get these cheaper at like Hobby Lobby, but I don't like to go to stores because they make you wear pants and a bra. So I shop a lot on Amazon and you'll find the link to those exact cones on Amazon. So also on Amazon, I found these really great um, rustic stars I'm not sure if you can see them but you get a bag of like a hundred of them which initially I was irritated by because I didn't want a hundred and some rustic stars but they were really cheap and so I didn't really care but you guys uh, hold on I'll open one so you can see they have ouch gosh they're the worst they're gonna kill me give me tetanus they have can you see the little hole right there in the top these would make perfect um, ornaments if you were doing your tree like in a rustic theme this year you could just put a couple of jump rings in the top and then hang them from an ornament hanger ta-da you could do like a string of like three of them and then hang them on your tree and have several of those be your accent they'd be super cute so anyway all kinds of opportunities if you buy these and you're doing these rustic trees so you will need glue gun glue sticks paper cones rustic stars for the top because they aren't as cute without them and then you will need fabric. Um, I used flannel fabric. You can use, well, you can use whatever fabric you want, but flannel is what's gonna look best for this because of the patterns. But you can use scrap fabric. Um, you can buy fabric by the yard. Um, you can even use old flannel shirts that you get at the thrift store or have left over. You know what I kind of thought would be really great with this is if you made this into a memory craft and you use like an old flannel shirt from your dad or your grandpa or your uncle or your brother or whatever um, you wanted to remember at Christmas and just kind of have these trees there as kind of like a silent um, memory, a memorial to them. I just thought that would be kind of cute to be able to cut up one of their shirts and use it as that. So. Maybe I'm crazy, but um, any kind of flannel is fine. These are the three different kinds of uh -oh, three different kinds of fabric I used. So this I just had left over from another project, who knows when, and I used it. Okay, we're going to uh, make some flannel trees. I'm gonna show you just how easy this is. Okay, so, oh my gosh, you know what I forgot? Scissors, you also need scissors. So um, please hold, I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm gonna grab scissors, ha! You wanna know what's hilarious about this? is that when I was getting dressed about four minutes ago, because I don't do anything last minute, my husband was like, you know, you don't need to wear pants. You don't need to wear pants at all. You don't need to worry about them. Well, you know what? I said, no, just as soon as I don't wear pants, I'm gonna have to get up and run. And then I'm gonna be like, well, can't leave because I'm not wearing pants. And I'm so glad that I put pants on. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's make these. So what you're gonna need to do first is cut your fabric into strips. There is no rule for this really. You can make the fabric as wide or as thin as you want. Um, I kind of like to cut mine about one and a half to two inches wide. So here's my thumb and here's the fabric. So you can kind of see it's about one and a half to two inches wide. And the great thing about plaid is that it kind of gives you a line to follow. So it's super easy to get a straight line so that everything's about the same width. So that's what we're gonna do first. Um, you will do the small cone tonight because the other ones take a while and I don't want you to get bored. I want to give you the idea. You will need obviously more fabric for a large cone than you want a small cone. Um, I like to vary the fabric colors because it's easier that way. Um, and I think it looks neater if you do them in different colors. You could do them all the same color if you wanted, if you had enough fabric. Um, so what you will need to do, I just go in and cut several strips, and then if you need more, cut more strips. Um, that way you're not wasting a bunch of fabric that you slice up into strips. 
Um, so after you, you glue it on, um, it's not gonna matter if you need to make a second strip. It'll layer it in really, really easy. It's no big deal. So we're gonna, since I already have some of this cut tonight, that's what we're gonna use um, to make these cones. Um, so what you want to do, fabric um, flannel will fray, but it's not going to fray enough that it's gonna make a difference on these. We want them to look a little rustic and a little fray-y, so it's not a big deal. Um, so what you're gonna want to do is cut on the longest side that you have, and that's where you're gonna wanna cut from. So lay out your fabric flat. Um, what I normally do is I just lay it out on the kitchen floor, because it's just a big flat area, and then you can just kinda sit on the floor and cut yourself a strip, which is what we're going to do. Um, I think I'm gonna cut from this side because it looks like at the fabric store they cut that side real weird. So we're gonna keep cutting from this side which I cut straight already, I think. And flannel is super cheap, by the way. If you need to buy it by the yard, even Walmart has it for like $5 a yard and you will not even need a quarter of a yard to do one of these. So we're just gonna eyeball it and cut about one and a half inches. Like I told you, this is not a huge deal. You do not need to stress about making sure that this is all exactly uniform as you go along because I have no attention span, as if you guys haven't noticed. So I just kind of cut-ish until I feel like it's about the same width when I go down. You won't notice once you start to wrap it the way that it's wrapped and glued and it won't matter. So, ta-da fabric. So these are a little bit different widths, but it doesn't matter. So what you're going to do first, you need to start at the bottom. It's super, super important for you to start at the bottom. If you start at the top, things are going to get real weird real fast and it won't wrap the right way, uh, right way. And then once you get to the bottom, things are going to overlap and it'll be gross and then it will sit crooked on your shelf and you don't want that. So what we're going to do is you take your hot glue gun, get your fabric in your hand, one strip preferably, Mm, we'll save the short strip for last. And then you're just gonna make a tiny line right here on the edge. My glue gun has been too hot for too long. Ooh, look, now it's ugly and yellow. Okay, you're gonna make a tiny strip, see it? And then we're gonna overlap by about a quarter of an inch on the bottom, okay? Do you see this? See how it's overlapped? We want to do that because then at the end, to give it a finished look, we're gonna glue that all around the bottom, okay? So then it's super simple from here on out. We are literally just gonna glue and wrap. And now the glue will be hot, duh, it's a hot glue gun, but you know, people whine about hot coffee at McDonald's, so I figure maybe I should give you a disclaimer. Keep it the same on the bottom all the way around. So normally you will have kind of an angle to this um, while you're wrapping, except for the bottom row. You wanna keep it straight so that you have the same amount of overlap on the bottom all the way around. Does that make sense? So once you make sure that it's totally covered, it should look like that, your first wrap, okay? We will leave all of that for the end and then we'll come back around. So now, I'm gonna stand this up right so you can see it. Now that it is all the way around and you have the same thing all the way around, now you're gonna start angling upward, okay? See that? Okay, so we're gonna angle upward as you glue and then just kind of wrap as an, at an angle, okay? And I'll show you what to do. See this weird spot here, how it kind of bubbles? Can you see that? We're, I'll show you what to do to be able to fix that in just a few minutes. You're gonna wrap, it will cover it up and you're not gonna notice it. So don't freak out and be like, I can't do it, it looks weird, because it's fine. Okay, so now you're gonna glue at an angle. You wanna keep the glue about like a quarter of an inch above this to make sure that it's glued above the fabric so that you can overlap so you won't see any gaps, okay? So just do a few inches, wrap up and around, press it down with your thumbs really, really well, like that, see what I'm doing? And just all the way around, that's all you're gonna do. You just keep it tight with your, between your thumb and your forefinger and you just pull it around. The glue dries quickly so it's not an issue, okay? Now, when we get to this side, you remember me talking to you about this bubble over here that we were concerned about, okay? So, see the bubble? What you're gonna do is we're gonna wrap and just cover the bubble. So look, whenever we go to glue, the bubble disappears. It's not there anymore, okay? And if you have questions while I'm doing this, 
feel free to ask in the comments and I will answer as I'm able to. But this is pretty straightforward. It's pretty self-explanatory. And these are blowing up on Pinterest right now. I was kind of, it's one of those things where you take pictures and you're like, oh, those pictures didn't turn out very good. I'll just go ahead and use them for now. And then if I need to retake them, I will. Except for, apparently everyone likes the pictures, so we're gonna keep them that way because why redo work if you don't need to? Glue and wrap, glue and wrap. Um, pro tip, make sure you have plenty of glue sticks sitting with you. Mine aren't normally in a cute little cup, they just are because otherwise they'd be rolling all over the table, which is normally what they're doing. Um, in a cute little cup uh, so that I don't lose them. But what you need to do is have several glue sticks here because for a small one, I'm not using as much glue. But if I were doing one of the big ones, I think I used three or four glue sticks on the real big one. And then at least that, um, probably three on the smaller one. You know, my husband came upstairs to get the cat and the cat is still here. So I don't really know what happened there. Okay. So you can see it's like making fun wrinkles, but they're like the best kind of wrinkles. It gives it so much character and kind of makes it look like this fun little um, piece of clothing. Okay, about out of glue with this glue stick, so I'm going to add another one. And there is a quicker video for this if you're annoyed because I talk so much and it's taking me forever to glue this. Hey, I'm going to show you a pro tip. I didn't do this for years and now I do it every time. When you go to add a new glue stick, instead of it just sticking in there, um, put a little dab of hot glue on and then stick it in the end and glue it to the other glue stick and then it won't move and it'll stay connected. Okay, almost done with this little tree here. Well, wrapping it at least. Then I'll show you how to do the other steps to finish it off so that it looks super cute. The great thing about these is that Hobby Lobby is selling them um, for a lot more than you can make them for yourself. And um, I'm just a real big fan of doing things myself. Uh, not only am I a big fan of doing things myself, but for doing things cheaper than I can buy it for. And then this, I don't feel like this turns out looking like um, a home craft. I feel like this turns out looking really, really cute when it's done. Okay, so now that this is all glued, you'll notice the end. Look, we have a tiny little bit of cone sticking out here and then all this fabric. So what we're going to do is trim this. Uh, I'm gonna hold it up here so you can see it. Trim this at an angle. I'll show you after I cut it because my brain is not functioning. Okay, trim it like this at an angle so that when you go to wrap it, it's not gonna show up. Like it'll just look perfect. Okay, I just put a little bit of glue right in the corner there and I'm gonna push it down just to make sure that what I wanted specifically to be covered up is covered up. Then you're gonna take glue and you're gonna put it on this little section here and then all along the very edge because the last thing you want to happen is for it to fray later. Whew. You never get over the burn of the hot glue. Okay, then use your scissors because it is, I'm using my husband's paper scissors. He's totes gonna kill me, but I couldn't find the other ones. Sorry. I'm that person, guys. I'm the one that's like, sorry, there were just scissors in the drawer. Buy new ones. Um, so now, this is how we finish this off. So you'll notice there's an overlap here. Uh, so what we wanna do, you don't just leave that because it looks real tacky. Um, but don't cut it off either because then it's just going to fray and over the years if you want to use it again and again um, it's it's going to end up being really gross really fast so you don't you don't want to do that so what you're going to do is just run a bead of glue right on the very inside and just push it down with your fingers don't stick them in the hot glue like i just did that is bad choice so bead of glue for a few inches push it down bead of glue for a few inches push it down Ooh. bead of glue push it down holy mother that was hot bead of glue find the little spots you miss and then that will look like that see how the ends are done and it sits flat on the table no issues okay and it's actually I feel like a lot more secure because a lot of times I thought like wow these are paper empty cones I wonder if they're gonna sit on you know if they'll be easy to knock over or whatever because like we have cats and they're the worst um, but once you add the fabric they're really sturdy so 
Now you need to add the star to the top of your tree. The best way to do this, I am weird, so the, this little hole, because they have little holes in them, I wanna make sure is at the top. I don't know why, I just do. So um, I always put where I finished gluing it in the very back so you can't see it, and then put the star on the front. So like wherever this is sitting. I tried doing two stars, like one on the back, one on the front, and they don't connect well together. Like it doesn't connect like it's supposed to, and I think it just looks weird. So you can do that if you want to. I just don't like the look of it when it comes out. So the stars will tilt back a little bit to hold on here, but you can't tell from where they're sitting at. So the best um, idea is just to put glue directly on the star itself. I just put a big, nice, fat wad of glue. Can you see that? And put it right on the end of the star and just hold for about 10 seconds. The stars um, are really thin metal and they radiate heat really well so you need to move your fingers a lot while you're doing this. Unlike me who's probably gonna have permanent burns for the rest of my life. No I'm just kidding. <laughs> so ta-da! Aren't they cute? And then you can do these in several different colors. You can do them in a true buffalo plaid. Um, I link to a really pretty fabric in the post itself and these stars and these cones specifically. So that way you can get everything to make them look just like what I ordered. Um, these cones, let me see if it says inches. Um, 13.7, so this one's just shy of 14 inches and this little tiny one is seven inches so they're not really that tiny i mean they just kind of look that way when they're on here but i think they turned out super super cute i gave a set of these to my friend who is doing um buffalo plaid this year for her tree and i think that's kind of what i want to do next year unless i change my mind i change the theme of my tree every year and i think i want to do that next year so these turned out really cute. They're super simple. See, even if you're not crafty, you can do these. They're not hard. It's just cutting some fabric, gluing them on. And you know, honestly, kids could probably do these if you help them with the hot glue, like if you had younger ones. If you wanted to do these using craft glue, you could. Um, it will not dry as quickly. Like you may need to hold them for a little bit longer or wrap them in a specific way so that they turn out how you want. Um, but you could use craft glue if you were doing these with kids or if you didn't have a hot glue gun. So like Aline's craft glue or something like that. So these are it. That's all it is. They don't take much to take uh, to make. The link in the description has all the supplies and all the instructions with pictures just like what I showed you if you don't want to watch this. So these are super easy. You can make them yourself. If you do make them, I would love for you to post a picture on one of the posts or for you to send me an email. They turned out super, super cute and they're not hard. Um, they'd be great to do with kids or for a ladies craft night or even if you're doing, um, it's not too late if you're doing like some craft sales. Um, if you are a crafter who sells at like craft shows, these would be a great, great thing for you to do um, because they have a really great um, profit margin for you to be able to sell that way and they look really cool. Love you all, have a good night.